Hello dear students, welcome to Devika's Commerce and Management Academy. <coughs> Liquidation of company. Liquidation means nothing but winding up. Liquidation of company or winding up of company, it is a legal process. Today we will see only the introduction part, but base. Without this base, you cannot go ahead. So please focus few points. Oh, why the company is going to liquidate or why the company is going to wind up? There may be few reasons. Whatever may be the reason, whenever company wants to liquidate, whenever company wants to wind up, I will be using these words, liquidate or winding up. Whenever company wants to wind up, then the company has to go through proper process. Here one legal advisor is appointed for this process. That legal advisor is called as liquidator. liquidator. How he will be appointed, all these things we will see in depth. So this legal uh, legal liquidator, he is going to wind up the company. With his guidance, the company is going to wind up. All the assets, liabilities, everything should be pay off. To whom we have to pay from where we can realize the assets value. Like all these things, he is going to handle it. Now introduction part, as a part of introduction, you can see that how a company can wind up. How a company can liquidate. There are two ways. This already we have learned in company law. Just a small recap. Company can liquidate in two ways. One is voluntary winding up. Voluntary winding up by resolution of members. Voluntary company has decided that we wanted to wind up. We want to liquidate this company. When voluntary company has a company, means the company members, board members, shareholders, all these people. So they are taking a decision. They are taking a resolution. All the members. Taking a resolution through the resolution voluntary, they wanted to wind up. So this case is possible whenever company is not running well, company is in a sinking position and the profits are not good, unable to continue and something happened that is stopping them to continue the business. In such case, voluntary winding up is possible. For that, what they need to do? Simply ordinary resolution, they have to pass in a general meeting. In general meeting, they have to pass one ordinary general, uh, one resolution. And this resolution is the first step. This voluntary winding up also, it can be possible through the members, members means company members, voluntary winding up or creditors voluntary winding up. Creditors means who have given loan to the company, whose money is uh, involved in the company activities who have given loan or whose money is involved in the company. So those people are creditors, we know it. So members can wind up voluntarily or even creditors also. Why the creditors are going to voluntary winding up the company, where their amount is not safe, where their payments are not proper, company is not in a position. In such cases, they can involve and they can come to one conclusion in a general meeting. So these are the possibilities of voluntary winding up or voluntary or compulsory, it's not compulsory, voluntary, voluntary winding up of the company. Second thing is that mandatory winding up or you can say it is a compulsory winding up. Mandatory or compulsory winding up, it is in the, in the decision of the court. Court will be deciding why the court is going to involve, why the court is going to give such kind of judgment if any illegal activities or uh, something is deceiving or company is not preparing the accounts properly and uh, everything is false information is there whenever they come to know that such kind of activities are going on in the organization then the court is going to wind up the company that is mandatory winding up by the court or you can say it is a compulsory winding up of the court now here unable to pay its debts or uh, any activities as I told in such cases. So what they have to do in default in filing with the registrar. By default they have to file it in the registrar. In any of this case who will be appointed? One liquidator is appointed for winding up of the company. He will take, wait, take care liquidator. So he is going to take care of the company winding up process. Now few things we have to discuss. One is that how do we maintain the accounts in liquidation of company? Only two steps are there. 
that we can discuss steps involved in company liquidation step number 1 is we have to prepare the statement of affairs statement of affairs you heard it somewhere single entry <coughs> accounts from incomplete records there we had statement of affairs opening statement of affairs closing statement of affairs right so in the same way here also we have to prepare statement of affairs who has to prepare this statement of affairs this statement of affairs can be prepared as per the companies act 2013 section 274 remember this as per the companies act to 2013 section 274 it defines that who can prepare statement of affairs it can be under the guidance of directors secretary manager or chief officer so they need to make out and submit the statement of affairs within 21 days from the date of appointment of liquidator who can submit any one of these people director secretary manager a chief officer any one or all of them together they can make out the statement of affairs and they have to submit within 21 days from the date of appointment of liquidator liquidator is appointed today is suppose say uh, 1st may within 21 days before 21st of may liquidator is appointed on 1st may so before 21st of may we have to submit who company has to submit on behalf of any of these people all together they can submit it within 21 days okay sometimes they may ask for the extension extension time limit is here 3 months what is statement of affairs who has to prepare company has to prepare it is not in the hands of liquidator liquidator is not responsible for the statement of affairs once if it is ready then they'll call the liquidator our side no problem statement of affairs is there you can proceed statement of affairs gives you a basic information of this total company how many assets are there how many liabilities are there who are the creditors and uh, to whom we have to pay such basic information true information is given by the statement of affairs if this is ready then liquidator is going to enter into the job he has to prepare one statement that is liquidator's final statement of account accounts statement of affairs is company is preparing once once this is over then liquidator's final statement of account he has to prepare it this is very easy it looks just like cash book cash book did you remember single column cash book double column triple column we learned right so cash book what what do we write debit side receipts credit side payments in the same fashion liquidator is going to prepare one statement of account it means that what we are receiving and what we have to pay how we have to settle so this will be the job of the liquidator two things to be prepared now we'll focus on the another concept that is that statement of affairs covers the following list statement of affairs in this one this is covering few list total eight points are there list a b c d like that till h so all this list you must remember or you must understand so this list is related to the statement of affairs what is this list is saying point number 1 or list a so this is talking about assets not specifically pledged these assets are not ple not pledged means free no pledge suppose plant and machinery 1 lakh is there this is not pledged free means you can sell if it is pledged you cannot sell pledged for particular creditor means he is having the right over that assets not pledged means it is free you can sell no doubt at all so that's in the list number a assets not specifically pledged no not pledged not specifically pledged and point list b it is saying that assets specifically pledged not here specifically pledged with the secured creditors few creditors are there they are saying this unless you give us some uh, sub pledge assets we are not going to contribute for the organization then you have to so those assets we are discussing in the list b so asset specifically pledge with secured creditors okay and uh, list c is here preferential creditors preferential creditors means whenever uh, during this liquidation period whenever there is any kind of payment 
preference will be given to this preferential creditors that is why we say it as a preferential creditors okay at list d debenture holders secured by floating charges debenture holders are secured of course whether the said or not debenture holders means always it is secured only we have to make the payment to them so these people with the floating charges okay debenture holders secured with the floating charges in the list d and then list list e secured creditors secured creditors means their loan amount is secured sorry uh, list e is sorry list e is unsecured creditors there is no security for these creditors if the company is having profits they will be paid otherwise no if any company is under loss or anything happened so their amount their investment is not saved that is unsecured creditors in the list f then list g paid up equity share capital sorry list f list f paid up preference share capital paid up whatever the amount is paid by the preference share capital holders preference share holders so that is f and in the same way g is a paid up equity shares f is preference shares g is equity share okay and lastly list uh, list h estimate surplus after preparing everything estimation of the either surplus or deficiency what do you get you may get surplus or you may get deficiency so this is showing in the list h estimate surplus or deficiency as regular contributors okay so these are the eight list which are related to the statement of affairs you need to remember okay now let's talk about liquidator as i told you liquidator will be appointed to take care of the liquidation of the company what is his role how will be appointed what is his remuneration all these things we'll see now right now who is the liquidator you know liquidator is appointed to liquidate the company now his appointment is who is going to make the appointment if it is a mandatory or compulsory winding up in such case high court high court is going to appoint through a tribunal through a tribunal high court is going to appoint because it is mandatory compulsory winding up um, compulsory winding up always through the court only when it is through the court court only is going to appoint the liquidator if it is voluntary voluntary winding up in such case he will be appointed to, through the creditors okay liquidator is appointed through the creditors in a general meeting compulsory means court through a tribunal if it is uh, uh, voluntary then company uh, creditors they can appoint through the any meeting okay so this is the appointment now we'll see the duties what are the duties what do they do in these liquidators so mainly the their duties are first thing is that collect the assets how many assets are there for the company collect all those assets then what to do pays its debt collected assets okay got the assets then pay the debt liabilities all the liabilities pay the debt then distribute any surplus among the members in accordance with their rights after collecting and after paying there is another duty is also there i forgot to write sell sell the assets or dispose the assets you can say dispose the assets and here you need to be very careful that uh, uh, what, how many assets are there what is the rate and how to dispose it and for disposing also he'll be paid a special remuneration or commission something like that they, they'll be paying so this is also his duty collecting the assets and dispose those assets and pay off the debts and after doing all this thing if anything is there profit or surplus whatever it may be distribute any surplus among the members according to their right according to their rights who's having first right like uh, we have discussed here yeah, preferential creditors first pay to them like according to the order and need and preference so paying off so these are the duties of liquidator and uh, liquidator remuneration anyhow we'll be discussing in depth in the next class because we'll, we have to work out the problems also uh, simply i'll give you uh, general information liquidator's remuneration if it is compulsory winding up 
are uh, forcefully winding up by the court then company that court is going to decide his remuneration company has to do nothing because this is through the order of court nothing to worry if it is through the company voluntary winding up then who is going to appoint this li liquidator as i told you creditors are going to appoint in general meeting in general meeting itself only his remuneration will be decided remuneration suppose say general remuneration is decided already for extra remuneration also sometimes commission like uh, 2% or 3% are disposing the assets so this kind of things also it will be decided so but remuneration point of view will discuss in depth in the next class right now you got an idea what is liquidation it's a very simple easy chapter need not to worry much only few points step by step if you remember this is very easy okay liquidation of the company got an understanding want to take screenshot yes in the next class we'll see remuneration of liquidator and related to that we'll work out few problems also short problems stay connected write neatly notes and understand each and every concept so it will be easy for you to go ahead and whatever textbook you are following please refer that also stay connected see you good luck